talking about fashion there's some great fashion career advice here from one Derek Blasberg right now I'll, I'll confess to you I, I wasn't necessarily that familiar with well I, I knew who Derek Blasberg was you know you see him on the fashion circuit all the time he's always hanging around with the you know with the models and the socialites and stuff like that 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 you know and love in the fashion industry but I kind of never, never knew what he actually did right and if anything if I'm being completely honest, his face always kind of wound me up, right? I don't know why it is. He's kind of just got, he's got a bit of an annoying face. I'm sure he knows of this. I'm sure he's aware his face is kind of annoying. But it is what it is, right? Everyone, everyone's got their things. I'm sure people might think I have an annoying voice, might have annoying hands, annoying nose. I don't know. There's things that everyone has that's annoying. Whatever. It, it is what it is. But he's got this great interview, actually, on Business of Fashion, which I recommend you check out. Business of Fashion are kind of pivoting and steering away from just being um, a platform to just report on industry news and they're kind of really trying to shape the conversations that are happening in the fashion industry from talking about sustainability from talking about um data protection from the podcast things that they have to the panel discussions to the career platform to the educational resources they're really trying to um, usher in a whole new generation of fashion professionals right and i guess for the, for the reason it might be based on the fact that Imran Ahmed was a bit of an outsider when he started business of fashion and he's probably come into this industry from the outside in being a fashion being a fan of course but not kind of coming from the agency design house world and working and stuff working way up interning here and there and he's kind of maybe seen that it's the same faces that exist in every kind of company right which kind of again is the reason why we see stuff like the Gucci blackface thing happen, right? Regardless of what your feelings are behind it, the reason why we see things like that happening is because it's the same people working in these companies for the most part, right? For decades and decades, there's no real emphasis to bring in fresh new faces. It's a bit, the, the, the employees of these companies or these agencies or these brands become their own gatekeepers, right? Because essentially, they know that these jobs are highly covetable, right? Everybody that reads Vogue magazine, reads ID, reads Days, reads all these magazines would want to have those jobs. And probably could do those jobs with their eyes closed. So in order to kind of protect these jobs that are probably not needed, right? They're probably overpaid. Um, they have to kind of um, enforce this kind of like gated community around them where no one really knows how to get in. Um, even to get an internship, you have to kind of beg and plead. The internships really don't sometimes nowadays because everyone's kind of aware of the industry don't really need to lead to nowhere. And a lot of people are kind of having to do things their own way, DIY way, whether it's starting their own agency, whether it's starting their own creative agency, whether it's starting their own modeling agency, starting their own magazine, starting their own um, publishing platform in order to kind of circumvent um, the industry and kind of like wriggle in that way, which can, some people it can work, but some people, you know, they don't want to start their own zine, right? Some people just want to have a job and it's hard to get in. But I love the interviews they've been having lately where they've been interviewing some individuals within the fashion industry and trying to get an understanding of actually what goes into, what went into kind of um, them making it and Derek Blackberg's Derek, Derek Blasberg's interview is really good like again I didn't know much about him I thought his face was annoying but I, now I'm a big fan of him I like the guy and I think the reason why I like the guy is because reading his story he's not from the major cities right he's from Missouri he came from the outside in so he was fascinated with fashion just as, just as I was right sitting in my house in um or in my mom's house in Cannon Town custom house um, with no real connection to anything to, to do with fashion, just being a guy reading the Sunday Time magazine, finding this magazine inside the Star Mag and be like, oh, wow, it's amazing. And then that kind of cascading into reading ID, reading this, da 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 da. And then, which eventually leads me to St. Martin's and then blah, 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 blah. And then now I'm, I'm kind of here in this weird kind of, you know, creative marketing, blah, blah, blah space, right? That's where I kind of got from. But my passion came from the fact that I was on the outside looking in. I was kind of infatuated with this world, but I was also comfortable being on the outside and, and loving it from there. But I think that fact that Derek Blasberg came from the outside in is why this interview is really detailed and really gives some real practical advice for those of you out there that want to get involved in the industry. And I really recommend you check it out because he really details his um, journey um, well. And from detailing his journey you can really tell why you can tell why he got where he got to and why you know essentially you see him with all these models and all these fashion industry people who generally seem like they like his company um one bit that sticks out I, i've read a couple of bits that sticks out here for me in the interview it says the following so this is on the business of fashion it's called um Darius blasper's tips on for getting ahead in fashion i'll link it in the show notes if you want to check it out but it says the following um, the interviewer asked him, at the beginning of your career, how did you start networking? And immediately something that, well, I liked essentially what he said is this. I never liked the word network, which is great, right? Because if you look at Derek Blasberg on, online, if you Google image search him and you see who he hangs around with, you would think that he's the quintessential networker, right? The quintessential let's grab brunch, the quintessential let's chop it up, right? Let's connect. You think he is that cringy guy, but actually it's not like that. And it, and it continues. It makes it sound like... Or it, 
all the relationships I have in fashion world I pro I, I professionally strategic, which is kind of offensive. And I heard, totally agree with him. When I went to LA to see um the golf wine festival a couple of years ago, it was my first time going to LA on my own. It was fucking amazing, great experience. I loved everything about it. But one thing that was quite grating and kind of made me feel a bit yucky was that whatever whatever party I went to, you know, I'm a I'm, I'm a pretty outgoing kind of person. So I guess whatever party I went to, people got the impression that because I was the way I am in general, day to day, that I was somebody of importance. And they'd come up to me and start talking to me and trying to be my friend. And I just thought people were being friendly. But in the moment, I kind of just told them, you know, what do you do? Oh, I work a regular customer. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a, at that time, I was a marketing assistant. I'm just a marketing assistant. They had they just like completely ditched me, right? Because I just had a regular nine to five. I wasn't, I wasn't anyone. I didn't have a show. I wasn't writing a pilot. Uh, my dad didn't own the network. I was just a regular dude, right? So they kind of would, would just, you know, turn tail and go somewhere else. And it kind of made me feel disgusted. I was like, Jesus Christ, these people are only talking to me because they think I have something, they have something to gain from our relationship, right? It's not something that's like a, not actually want to be my friend. They actually want to hang out. They just want to see what kind of value they can suck out of me. And Derek Blasberg, again, says it here, right? The idea of having a network of friends is offensive because it means as if like they are your you are all working together to kind of get your career forward. Now, there is, it does happen sometimes, right? There is, especially in streetwear, you've probably, and we can all mention the people that we see on streetwear where we can tell from the outside looking in that these friendships aren't real. They're not, they know they're quite surface level. And the moment someone gets involved in any sort of controversy, you know, these friends that are talking about, you know, spreading, oh, I'm so proud of this person, so proud of that person. The moment they get into any kind of controversy, they are completely silent and don't make any comment on social media, which again is kind of striking because it shows that, you know, the relationships are only about how they're going to get themselves forward but there also is this there also is a, an opportunity within that kind of disgusting kind of like oh let, let me just use you to kind of get where i want to get to there is also a space for you to kind of actually cultivate actual real relationships which will go a long way to getting you where you want to get to just just with pure karma not anything else just with pure like being a good person there is something about being different than anyone else in the group and actually wanting to talk to that person because you want to hang out with them right actually going about things differently whether it's like you have a famous friend and you never take pictures together with them um, you have somebody that's of influence you never ask a favor from them to get you something that you want there is a way to kind of cultivate actual friendships that are probably going to serve you not serve you but they're probably going to be more beneficial to you and your life in general than it is to kind of always try and extract, extract value and again i just think nowadays it's hard because you know kids want instant gratification you want to get on straight away you see stuff on social media and because you see the final project you, the final image you think that's it like they just made it then they uploaded it and it happened when you don't and when you have no idea what the backstory was behind it like again me i had my own personal um impression of what Derek Blasberg was but across this um by reading this interview again he might be presenting one face i don't know how he is in real life and never met him but just from reading the interview, my, my impression of him has completely changed. And I've now seen, oh, there's a reason why he's always hanging around in models. There's a reason why he's always hanging around in industry inside. There's a reason why. There's a reason because he's actually a cool dude and he's actually got a really long storied history of coming up in the industry, working a million jobs. Anyway, but the interview continues. Um, do, 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 which is kind of offensive. I, I've carved out a family for myself in this business and I'm proud of it, which is, again, I'm really, uh, I think that's something you could stick a pin on because, again, you know, coming from the outside of fashion and trying to be involved in it or for me, trying to be involved in streetwear, trying to be involved in, in everything that goes into it, whether it's sneakers, whether it's, you know, whatever it may be, there is something quite amazing about finding people especially the older you get right finding people that you sh finding new friends which is harder it's hard to do the older you get anyway in general right it's difficult to find new friends but then finding new friends that also share your interest right that into the same thing you're into which is a very very niche interest right being involved being interested in fashion and caring about these kind of things caring about art caring about music going to gigs right um, all these kind of things, going to festivals all over the world. It's something that not everyone does, right? It's something that's only reserved for a small group of people. To find that group of people and tap into them, right? And become actual friends with these people that, where you have someone to go out with, where you have someone to hang out with, someone to talk about the new release to, is something that you shouldn't take for granted. So, you know, the, the ability to make a family within that little niche group, that little niche subculture, is something that you should hold dear. But you should never refer to it as a network. Never refer to it as a network of friends that you're going to use or exploit for your own career gain. Because that isn't friendship. That isn't friendship. Anyway, it continues. Um, maybe that sh um, should be the first tip for working in fashion. If you don't have a passion for it, don't bother. 
which I, I, I really understand. And he says, to be honest, I didn't know this industry existed until I moved to New York to go to college. I grew up in St. Louis, St. St. Louis, M Missouri, where high fashion was the Gap Store um, and the uh, at the mall. And before YouTube hosted millions of hours of style programming for any serial secret fashion lover to see wherever in the world. So when I got to New York, I discovered this glamorous creative world and I was like, this is it, sold, right? So he came into it with that understanding. Uh, the way it all started for me was um, I was with a girl who lived below me in a freshman dorm. My my very first uh, my very first friend in a big city who was a part time student and a part time model with elite. Now this explains everything why Derek Blackford is always hanging around models, right? So his his first friend in New York was a model, and then he got introduced to all the other models. And he says I'm um, she introduced me to her agents, who then became my friends too. Again, friendship. Um, they commissioned me to write biographies, which again I'm sure he wasn't paid to do something he's offered to do for free. Which again is another note to you guys watching out that you want to make an industry for the girls. It's probably boring work too. Um, that's where I first met Giselle, Karen Ellison, and Amber Violetta. Uh, Violetta, sorry. In my sophomore year, I wrote a press release for a fashion PR company. I then entered at W Magazine in my junior year and American Vogue in my senior year. After I graduated in New York after University 2004 with two degrees in journalism and dramatic literature. Again, actual, an actual education, right? Which is fucking awesome. I got a job as an assistant at um, Vogue. I turned out to be a terrible assistant and I was fired from that job a year later. But that's a whole other story. But again... The idea of going into an industry, um, understanding how lucky you are to be in and actually trying to form real relationships. Look how far that gets you. Um, did you feel the, con the the golden rule of as had to? Did you did you follow a golden rule as had to collect yourself? Right when his intern, he said yes. When I was an intern, I overheard a Vogue editor explain the reason she always booked a certain model was because she was, um, and this is a direct quote, happy to be here, easy to work with. This clicked with me. And that's something that doesn't get said often more enough, right? I think I've mentioned it a few times, but Neil Gaiman has this amazing quote um, in his commencement speech where he kind of speaks about the three things that you need in order to kind of, you know, get ahead in life, right? So I think being on time, good someone to be, uh, being uh, being on time, uh, being a pleasure to be with, and then um, handing in your work on, uh, being on time, and, and doing high quality work, right? High quality work, pleasure to be with, um, and being a, whatever, those three things. There's three things anyway. There's, there's two of the three that you need to have in order to get forward in life. But essentially, one of the things I always drew, that I always kind of drew from that Neil Gaiman quote, was the idea of some of being great to be around. Because sometimes I think in those, most industries, because I've you know I've kind of skirted around different kind of sub industries, whether it's kind of nightlife world, the sneaker world, the streetwear world, the fashion world, the startup world, and I've seen that in most of those industries, for the most part most of the people that have been there a long time are quite cynical, right? They're quite cynical. They're quite dour. They've kind of been beaten up by the industry, whether it's been good or bad, right? They've kind of seen all of, they've, they've seen the good and seen the bad, but probably more bad over the last few years, right? They've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. And for them, the magic has gone, right? The magic is fucking, it's evaporated. It's, disappeared right it's just a business it's just something that keeps the lights on it's obviously they're passionate about it but it doesn't have that same allure that it did for you right but i think there is something to be said for coming into that industry new and fresh face and trying to remain optimistic trying to remain grateful trying to remain um just happy to be there right and actually letting that kind of um exude from your body actually letting that be a vibe that everyone could just read about wow this kid is just like you know going out to get everyone meal deals at Tesco, right? But they're so happy just to be around a photography studio because it's something that you've dreamed about forever. And I think that attitude goes a long way, even if you're not good at what you do, right? That attitude goes a long way because by and large, a whole room full of cynical people are only cynical because it just fits the room. The moment you're the one happy, jolly person in there that's saying good morning, that's asking people how their weekends were, that's inquiring about people's boyfriend and girlfriends, that's asking what someone did for their birthday, you become just a, you become somebody that everyone can kind of like um, escape to when they want to just like, you know, have brighten up their day a little bit. And that's something that I've kind of always kind of uh, held close to my heart and has held in my head as something that whenever I start new roles or new jobs, especially when it's something that's quite difficult to do in the first or in the beginning, is I try and say, OK, I'm going to start this job and I'm probably going to be shit for the first couple of weeks or so. Right, I'm probably not going to do the work on time, but what I want to do is I want to be good to hang around. I want to be a good team member. I want them to know that I fit in with them. I don't want to fit in with them by forgetting who I am. I want to be exactly who I am, but I also want them to know that me being who I am is a great accompaniment to the, co to the company, to the team overall. And I've been doing that forever. And I think for the most part, in most of my jobs, maybe bar, maybe for the exception, maybe except maybe two, um, where it hasn't really worked out, personalities, personalities haven't really clicked. For the most part, 
I've been in most places I've been in, even if even if pe- people might say, oh, he was too loud. Oh, he didn't do his work, blah, blah, blah. One thing that no one can ever say was that I wasn't fun to be around, right? And that's something, again, that I think, especially in the fashion world where people are ultra cynical, right? Ultra dull. You only have to watch a couple of panel discussions on So Studio, right, with a popular designer to see how uh, cynical and snarky people are when it comes to that industry. Again, it's, you know, they've been ground down by it. But I think if you come into it with a bit of a positive attitude, I think, honestly, you could go a real, real long way. Um, anyway, it continues. Um, it says, oh, um, uh, did I love waking up at 7 a.m. on a Saturday to unpack bunches of trunks um, that had come back from a shoot? Well, no. But I did it, and I did it with a smile on my face. And the people I was working with were into, into that. Also, truth be told, coming from Missouri and suddenly being knee-high in couture dresses and diamond earrings wasn't that hard to smile at. If I had to add one thing to that golden rule, it would be never say no. Can you make copies? This is when people still made copies. Uh, can you get coffee? Can you come in early tomorrow before you go to class? Do you want to come with us to the market appointment? We're, we're going for drinks later. If you want to join, yes, 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 yes. And that's something, again, that is difficult nowadays i've got to be honest for me because of the whole you know when you grow up you don't necessarily want to be out too much and you know i've got the djing stuff i do on the side and everything else i'm doing on the side through the podcast whatever it may be right um my time is limited especially if you consider that you're working five days a week and it's eight days in the out in the day to work and then you've got all the other time outside of it only to do what you need to do my time is limited even if i do wake up at five in the morning i don't have much time to do the things i want to do so i get quite protective with my time right i want to just i want to make sure i'm in control of what i'm doing i don't want to be pulled in different directions but there is something about these kind of industries like um the entertainment creative industries creative entertainment industries where there is a responsibility or there is something that you need to understand that the social gatherings um whether it be the drinks whether it be the company things whether it be the after after shoot things are probably the, the most important thing that you need to attend or that you need to be at or that you need to be a good accompaniment with to um good company at um is the drinks you just have to get those right you have to get especially in the first couple of months it's something that you just have to ace if you don't ace those things, unfortunately, I don't see how you're going to get forward. It's un- it's unfortunate for people that don't drink, for people that don't want to involve themselves in that lifestyle. But I think there's something about just being there, right, and being good company and hanging out and having a good time that it really does go a long way in order to kind of that, um, set the path of your course where you want to go into in the future. Now, that's only if you want to be involved in the industry. If you want to just do your own thing and have your own brand, have your own agency, then just pull off from that and just do your own thing. It's going to take a long while, a longer time. It's a slower burn, right? Um, it requires a, you kind of investing money from your own pocket. It requires maybe more sleepless nights because it means you're going to be you're going to be doing you know you're going to be probably interning somewhere and then doing your own thing on the side. It's going to require a lot of work. But if you want to navigate the industry and you want to kind of um, um, hasten your journey to the top and kind of limit the time and shorten the time it takes you to get there, you really have to att- you, know, you have to get great at attending these events, whether they be drinks, whatever it may be going, and just being good company and just being knowing how to hang out. Um, Da, 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 da. and one anecdote that you know i think there's a story that we all kind of wish we kind of had the story that kind of gets you it's your kind of um cinderella shoe moment right this is Derek Blasberg's one he says in the following in 2004 the year anna winter launched the cfda um vogue fashion fund she asked jonathan becker to photograph the awards dinner the photo editor couldn't find someone to hold jonathan's lights for the portraits and at the last minute he was asked if i could quickly throw a suit on and do it could I? Happy to be here. Easy to work with. Jack, Mc, uh, Jack McCullough and Lazaro Hernandez from Perenza Shola won that night. That uh, They brought uh, Packer Posey as their date. And after I finished holding those lights, all uh, we all went to the bar called Sway and celebrated. These two dudes are still my, my two best friends. So imagine, from just being around and just being a cool guy that everyone knew to hang out, and everyone knew it was a good, a good hang, he got recommended for this random job that would, you know, I, I guess photo assistants around the world that love fashion would probably, you know, cut off their left arm for. He got offered to do it. He could have easily turned it down because he doesn't know anything about cameras. But he said, fuck it, I'll do it. Put on the suit, did it. And all of a sudden, he gets introduced to his other, quote unquote, network or circle of friends that then become his actual long term friends. Like some of the oldest friends in fashion. That goes to show just how just how important it is just to be a good guy, a good girl to hang around with, just to be good company. Away from all the interning, away from all the DMing people, away from being just a, you know, wherever the work is, away from that, just being a good person. Look how far it gets you. And this is in an industry where, by and large, everyone's quite cynical and quite snarky, right? Everyone's a bit dour. But just that idea that he came into all bubbly from his kind of, you know, middle America attitude, just grateful to be there. Look how far it took him. Um, blah, 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 blah. 
Um, oh, and he goes here. How much effort do you put into building relationship in fashion world? The answer is a lot. Um, I cannot sleep at night if I haven't gone through my inbox and replied, filed and deleted every single email I received that day. I look at Instagram twice a day, once I wake up and when I go to bed. I keep scrolling back until I get to this point where I looked at it the time before. If I say I'll be somewhere, I show up. Um, I never flake. I also have a perfect attendance from kindergarten through high school. So I'm used to never missing anything. Does this all require effort? Of course. But as my mom told me, when I was young, nothing good is easy and nothing easy is good fucking hell what great advice right what great advice awesome advice yeah again it's it just goes to show that these people that you look at especially you see on social again because i had my impression of him beforehand i mentioned before um it's never by chance it's never ever by chance there's never a there's never a there's never a hack that they did there's never something that allowed them to that you know that, there's no overnight success it doesn't exist even if it's overnight success to you to the person that it happened to it's not there was years of toil of like, you know, um, unaccredited work of things that no one knows about that you did in order to kind of get where you need to get to that now you finally got your break. People are then kind of saying, oh, you're only there because you're friends. You're only there because of this. But just to get those friends is difficult. So this story is fucking amazing. The idea that he goes through his messages and replies to everything. I'm sure there's people out there with less of a following that he, than Derek Blasberg has, with less of a, ne- a, a group of friends than, than uh, Derek Blasberg does, who are quite bougie with their inboxes, right? Don't reply to certain things, leave people hanging, don't reply to comments, don't answer emails back again, which is maybe time consuming, but they don't even do that stuff. And he's doing it at his level that he's at, right? Um, and the idea that he got, um, it, if his word is his bond, right? He's got that, he's got that kind of old school, um, point of view about him where if he says he's going to be somewhere he's going to be there and i kind of you know i've i generally do have that too there are rare occasions where if i have to you know where if i don't feel like going somewhere i'll just say but i've never i've never been the kind of person that does that thing where i i stall and wait for a better plan and then i and then i decide whether or not what i'm going to go to if someone wants me to be somewhere and i can and i can be there i'll be if i'll be there if i can't i'll just say um and it's something i've kind of done throughout my time even at work if someone says oh there's drinks happening at work and i say yes even if i regret it later I'm going to have to just, you know, suck it up and go. And then next time I'll know that not to do that again because I know how shitty I felt. <gasps> but I always try and say, I always try and keep to my word. And I think, again, these are little things that you don't get taught when you're in fashion school. You don't get taught when you're interning. You don't get taught these things. You think that actually the reason why you're there is because they want to, I don't know, they think you're really talented at holding lights or they think you can photocopy better than anyone or you make the best tea. No, actually part of the reason that's going to keep you there or it's going to give you the opportunity is the other things that go unsaid right is how you are in meetings um is the fact that you don't talk too much right the fact that you allow people in the room that are smarter than you or who or who have a higher position than you to, to have their platform to speak right you don't you don't butt in and think you have the most incredible idea you let people say what they want to say um you don't correct people um you lend a hand you anticipate people's needs before they even want them right you prepare pads of paper and notes and pens and that for meetings where people don't need them you take notes when no one else should take them um whatever it may be there's little things that you do that are outside of just the work that are gonna probably um impact your trajectory in fashion more so than you'd ever think and again these are things that don't get taught things that don't get said but i'm glad Derek Blasberg put it out there in the open i recommend you check it out i'm not going to read the entirety of the interview because it's a bit long but i recommend you check it out it's available on the business of fashion website um Derek Blasberg interview um titled uh tips for getting ahead in fashion i recommend you check it out it's really fucking good one of one of my favorites of the last season